and I'm sure the judge's first question to them will be, where you been, guys? Nowhere in that document does it make any sort of cause for action. Nowhere in that document is there anything that even begins to suggest that there is any way that they have been harmed as shareholders through these proceedings and that their rights have not been adjudicated. Only till now do they want to assert their rights. But even in trying to assert those rights, they can't even show how their rights have been violated as shareholders. It's a good thing this document is five pages because it'll fit really nicely into a shredder, which is probably where it's going pretty soon. So now that we got the I told you so's out of the way, let's take a moment to really look at things now that they've concluded. Why was it Wednesday that the shareholders failed to get a stay, or to be more specific, injunctive relief from the bankruptcy court in order to employ counsel and get discovery? And while it is easy to write off all of this quickly and cleanly by saying that the shareholders waited too long to address their rights as shareholders in the bankruptcy proceeding, after all, Judge Walrath admitted as much during the proceedings. Well, I'm going to deny your request because I think it is, it's beyond the 11th hour. It is entirely too late. If you had questions about the process, it was incumbent upon you to reach out to the debtor and its professionals. You knew what the deadlines were. You knew the basis in the record, the first day declarations and the declarations relating to the sale process made it clear that the debtor did not have an extended period of time to expose these assets uh, for sale. It's an operating company who was running out of cash and needed to uh, conduct a final uh, sale process and to s close that sale by the end of this month. I believe there's far more to this and it leads to the base fact of what they are asking for. While their documents say a stay, the real true form of explanation is that they are asking for injunctive relief. And at no point during their filing did they address that type of relief. And in oral arguments, well, but I'm getting ahead of myself. What is it that the shareholders failed to address? Well, if they want injunctive relief, there is a federal and widely accepted throughout the United States standard for being granted injunctive relief. This standard is a four-part test, and it is a high bar to clear as injunctive relief is something that is generally seen as something that should only be given out in the most extreme of circumstances where it is required. The four parts of the standard test of review for injunctive relief are 1. There is a substantial likelihood of success on the merits. 2. Irreparable injury will be suffered if the relief is not granted. 3. The threatened injury outweighs the harm the relief would inflict on the non-movement. 4. Entry of the relief would serve the public interest. And we don't have to look far from the hearing to see this standard in action. Mr. Bass, on behalf of the debtors, goes through each one of the points step by step as he carefully constructs his argument for why the shareholders should not receive injunctive relief. As noted in the agenda, Your Honor, we received three informal objections to bail. These were all from individual shareholders. Two were set forth in, in emails and one in a document that was signed by 11 individual shareholders, and we docketed that objection from the 11 uh, individual shareholders at docket number 185. That was received at the past Sunday evening, nearly two weeks after the sale objection deadline. To put that in a little bit of context, Your Honor, that we received, and though we received objections from, from 13 individual shareholders, including 11 in a single objection, the company has approximately 15,000 public shareholders that hold approximately 32 million dollars, 32 million shares of common stock. So this handful of objecting shareholders is a very, very small minority of the company's overall shareholders. 
With that, Your Honor, I'd like to at least initially address the objection that was filed by these 11 individual shareholders without foreclosing their opportunity to speak if desired. All right. What is the debtor's response then? As I read the objection, Your Honor, this small group is seeking a stay of the proceedings that would at least have this court not approve the sale today, permit these folks to engage counsel and conduct 2004 discovery, though it's not exactly clear from the objection what specific discovery is being sought. We read the relief in the objection to be akin to a request for a preliminary injunction, though it's not identified as such. Despite asking for that type of relief, which the Third Circuit has described as an extraordinary remedy to be granted only in limited circumstances, the objection makes no effort to support the relief other than to make some unsupported statements regarding, quote, lack of transparency and ambiguities and redactions in multiple documents, et cetera, filed with the court. There's no detail in the objection that supports any of those allegations, I'm sorry, allegations, and indeed there's nothing in the record that would support any of these claims. The amount, this amount, plus the company's remaining non-operating assets, such as the collection of remaining customer receivables, will be distributed pursuant to a plan of liquidation. We regret that it does not appear that there will be a distribution to shareholders. That fact, however, does not preclude this court from granting the relief requested today, nor does it serve as a basis to delay consideration of the matters before Your Honor today. All shareholders will receive the same treatment under the plan. There's no special deals for insiders, and no assets have been transferred to insiders or squirreled away for their benefit. Indeed, despite allegations to the contrary, the debtors submit that they have been transparent since day one, and in fact have filed and made public disclosures regarding the asset purchase agreement, as well as the process they were following. Everything has been docketed along the way and found its way into the public domain. The court must also understand that the debtors have an outside date in the asset purchase agreement and in the backup bidder asset purchase agreement of March 31 to close the transactions. So with that, any delay here would cause the possibility that the debtors will not be able to close under the asset purchase agreement. The debtors' liquidity is also waning, and the debtors, with any delay, are likely to run out of cash in the next 30 to 45 days. Also, distributions to creditors would be put at risk. Again, those distributions are expected to be substantial. For these reasons, Your Honor, I would suggest, and subject to further argument, that the objection should be overruled. As I had already stated previously, and Mr. Bass brings up in his arguments, the shareholders in their filing had not listed any reason to get injunctive relief. So now it is up to their oral arguments to try and convince the judge. And she seems at least willing to go along with them. But when their oral arguments don't produce anything other than their vague assertions already made in the filing, well, the judge doesn't exactly buy trust me bro arguments, especially when there's already legal precedent and a legal standard by which you obtain injunctive relief. But in the interest of being full and fair in the review, she proceeds to ask questions to try and draw them into giving the answers necessary to at least make a compelling argument. Here's how that goes. What do you expect you will discover? That there are other bidders out there willing to pay more for these assets? Your Honor, as discovery often bears out, it's unclear what the information will produce. Well, as the old saying goes, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. Judge Walrath tried explicitly with the question to get Mr. Pettengill to address the fact that he needs to show substantive chance of succeeding on the evidence. What new bids are out there that you know of? What do you plan on discovering? What reason should I grant you injunctive relief? And he can't do it! That is how bullshit the shareholders' arguments are. It isn't because the judge is in bed with Sky Vera or any of the numerous conspiracy theories floating around on Twitter in the Weeble comments section. 
It's because the shareholders had a shit case. That being said, I hope Tiffany Cook follows through with the threatened lawsuit from the hearing. I always need more entertaining things like this in my life, and it's relatively free, minus, you know, the small amount of money I have to pay Pacer for the documents and to follow along with the case. But, eh, I find it amusing, and hopefully you do as well. But, as for the uh, AVCT shenanigans, this is pretty much the end of it, at least for now, unless, you know, that lawsuit comes about. Unless there's something else that I can think of that needs to be addressed from the hearing, uh, that's pretty much wraps it up for now, and I'll move on to other things. But uh, until then, I'll catch you folks later.